There is one and only one graph image that I have used in, I would guess, 60 to 70 lectures in eight countries, and that's a graph of human population. And if one looks at that graph, what you see is human population roughly stable at around a billion people or so, well, maybe a little bit more, at around the time of Christ, and it stays pretty stable until we get to the bubonic, it starts to rise some as some primitive technology emerge, but then you get to the bubonic plague, there's a little dip. Then after the bubonic plague, you begin the start of what we would call the Renaissance uh, and the early stages of the Industrial Revolution, uh, the discovery of steam. The population starts to go like this. The introduction of coal, the population starts to go like this. But around 1900, around the turn of the 20th century, what you see as oil became ubiquitous was that the population went like this. And it goes up to six and a half billion people. We, we may be at seven billion people by the time anyone sees this, this interview. All of those people exist on this planet only because of oil. That's it. So it's axiomatic that if you take the oil away, the population must go away also. In all of science, in all of biology, there is no case where any population, be it bacteria in a petri dish or caribou in an arctic island, runs into a set of favorable circumstances and goes to that point without an immediate crash down. It's a law. It's a law as fundamental as gravity. It's a law as fundamental as thermodynamics. And if one thinks about it, it might also be viewed as true of the stock market or the financial markets, which go like this. And when they go like this, they automatically go like this. That's the history of every bubble.